In this video, I want to actually integrate the electric flux around an enclosed surface. Usually when we use Gauss's law, we never do a full integration. We use symmetry, which simplifies the integral significantly. But in this one, we're going to do uh, and to at least look at integrating around the entire surface of a cube. All right, so I have a cube here. It has one corner at the origin. It's at length L, sides of length L along the positive X, uh, Y, and Z axes. And the electric field for the, that uh, for which we are going to calculate the electric flux is be going to be given by uh, AX, I hat, A is a constant, plus B plus C, Y, J hat, where again B and C are constants. And we want to know what is the total electric flux around, uh, integrated over this cube or this integral, this surface integral. All right, this is total electric flux. All right. And and so to do this, um, like we often do when we're doing integrations, we're going to break it up into six different integrals, one for each side of the cube to uh, to to simplify the calculation. All right. So the first part we're going to so so uh, one, we're going to look along the positive z direction. Z direction. Okay, so once we identify the positive z direction, let's let's go ahead and, and identify where, where does that mean. So I'm looking at this side right here that's going to have its uh, n, n hat, that defines the normal perpendicular to that surface that's pointing in the positive z direction. So this is the first surface that I'm looking at. And so the first thing I want to do is identify, so this d a vector, this area element, is the magnitude of the area element times the normal vector, normal to that surface, which in this case is d a uh, k hat. and uh, I, I noticed immediately that for every small area element in that um, in in that square, for for everyone, all it all they all have the same normal vector. Okay, so next we want to calculate then e dot d a this this thing that we're going to integrate over. Okay, so now I just want to apply my rules for a dot product. So E, I, and I may take, uh, do all the steps early and then be able to skip some of these later on, but we're going to start by putting everything out there, walking through everything. So there's my electric field vector, and that's going to be dotted into this DA k hat. And so uh, you immediately realize that this thing is zero. The, the dot product, a dot b, you recall ax times bx plus ay times the product of the y components plus the product of the z components. And uh, the electric field only has uh, uh, x and y components. And the... Um, the, the area vector only has z components, and so this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, and the whole thing is equal to zero. All right, well that was easy enough. In fact, since I think the other side is going to be the same, let's do the negative z direction. So two, Look in the negative z, and of course, dA vector then is negative dA k hat, and uh, for the same reason that we have before, then this e dot dA is equal to zero everywhere. And I, I sort of skip the step that, of course, if this is zero everywhere, then the integral 
of this is also zero. No matter how many zeros you sum up, you still get zero. All right, so, so the z and positive z are, are, are uh, easy enough. Let's go on and take uh, the positive x. Positive, uh, <laughs> I wrote positive z again, okay. Positive x. Okay, so where, where does that look like up here? So positive x is this side here where the end points in the positive x direction. Note that this plane is at uh, x is equal to L, right? So it's it exists in the yz plane and it is at the, the position here, x is equal to L. All right. So, we're going to approach it the same way. First, we have this, we identify our area element vector, which is the magnitude is the area element, and everywhere the normal vector is pointing in the positive i direction. And so now we want the electric field. Now the electric field is at x is equal to l, and then at positions y and z. So, if I look at my my uh, expression then, that's a times l i hat plus uh, b plus c y j hat. So here my here's my my general electric field up here. I'm substituting l in for x because everywhere in this plane x is equal to l. Okay, and so now. I can calculate this e dot dA is equal to uh, this thing. I want to just grab this down here. Let's just do that. e dot dA then is this vector dotted into the dot product of this. Okay, so now I have um, both vectors have non-zero x components. And so the, the dot product then is equal to a times l times dA. This is the x component of the first vector times the x component of the second vector. The second vector does not have a y component, so uh, the rest of the, neither have a z component, the rest of the terms are zero. So here's e dot dA. And so now I can integrate do my surface integral. My surface integral is over the area A, and it's A times L dA. Both A and L are constants, so I can pull those out, A L A dA. And so a, a surface integral that you've done in calculus usually involves parameterizations over, in this case, Y and Z, etc., uh, and then to and you figure out the um, limits of integration and all those things, but we don't have to do that here because we're integrating nothing. We're, we're integrating the number one. We're just adding up all the little dA area elements over the entire area, and that just gives us the area. So this is A times L cubed. The area of one side of the square is L squared, so the, vol the, uh, uh, so the area is L squared, and then the, the integral is a l cubed. Okay, so now we have our first non-zero term in the positive x direction. Okay, so let's look at the negative x direction then. We'll come back up here. And so that's this side of the cube right here where the, the normal vector is pointing in the negative i hat direction. All right, so this is negative. Let's get a different color here, negative x. So here our area element then is the magnitude of the area element times its normal vector, which in this case is negative i hat. All right. And so um, this it's, uh, also r note that everywhere here x is equal to zero. So before, when we did the positive x, that was this plane, um, the entire plane was at the location x is equal to L. So for this plane, the entire plane is at 
the position x is equal to zero. So when we do our electric field then at zero, y and z, that is equal to then just zero i hat plus b plus c y j hat and then the dot product e dot da is b plus c y j hat dotted into negative da i hat so again these two are orthogonal this is zero. This vector has no x component. This vector has no y component. So the dot product is zero. So we have another term that gives us nothing. All right, we're headed into the home stretch now. We only have uh, two more surfaces, those in the positive and negative y. All right, so let's look at the, posi the positive y. That's right here. And so this has the the, the normal vector pointing in the positive y direction and notice that this plane is at y equal to L. Okay, so let's go down here and we see, let's go positive y. We first have our area element is equal to our magnitude times the direction which is positive y and we have here y is equal to L, so our electric field at x, L, z then is equal to uh, a x i hat plus b plus c l j hat. Okay, so I want the dot product e dot d a j. So note the first vector only has a y component and so the dot product then is only going to be the products of the y components so I have B plus CL times DA okay and so there's the now I have uh, that dot product I can now integrate my surface integral B plus CL DA B, C, and L are all constants, so they come out of the integral just like before. I get this integral over the area of dA, which is just the area. This is L squared, so we get B, L squared, plus C, L cubed. Okay. All right, so we have another non-zero term here to add to the one previously. All right, so let's do our final surface here at the bottom, the one with a uh, unit vector normal to the surface pointing in the negative y hat direction. Also notice that this is at y is equal to zero. Okay, so come down here. And so now we're at negative y, our area element is uh, vector is d a j hat at y is equal to zero our electric field at well sorry Oop. our electric field at x zero z then is equal to a x i hat plus b j hat since y is zero. All right, and so now I take the dot product of these two vectors. This first one, or the, well, the second one in the dot product, but this one only has a y component, so I'm only left with the product of the y components, which is b dA. Now I can integrate b dA over the area A, pull out the constant area D A, which gives me the area, which is L squared. Okay, so I have all of the, uh, the, I've now integrated over all six surfaces, so the total flux is the sum of all these. So we have this one, B L squared, and we have this one, uh, oh, ah, uh, shoot, I lost my minus sign, didn't I? Why didn't you stop me? This <laughs> negative, uh, going too fast towards the end, of course, negative y, negative a, uh, 
da here. And so when we take the dot product, we get negative bda, and we get a minus sign that comes through all of them. Yes, so we have a negative bl squared here. And then for the, uh, the second term, we have plus bl squared plus c l cubed. And then we had one more non-zero term, al cubed plus al cubed. These cancel, and our total flux then is equal to c plus al cubed.